Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. This is my final uh, video on this session, so it's completely unedited, bit of a ramble, um, but for closure I've got to do another one. I couldn't do one yesterday because basically nobody wanted to see me yesterday morning. Um, that would have been horrific for you, so um, not good at all. Because uh, obviously the, the final night was a late one and, and all that. So, uh, so I travelled back yesterday and now it's all processed. I'm fine, we're all alright, everything's good. So I'm just going to run through what I saw on the last day and some very brief um, thoughts. So, okay, so first of all, it's, it's dealer day. So the way the session works is you don't really have any dealers. Management Inc. have their uh, stand set up for the whole thing, clearly uh, for good reason. And, um, and then you have dealers on the last day. And what I like, see, I haven't been to this session, uh, this session for a few years, so I know it's grown to be a very large thing. And what I was expecting was loads of dealers and that kind of exhausting kind of over, over sort of overwhelming uh, sensory overload of of magic stuff and it still had that that nice chilled feel it was a small room uh, there was no tat there which is always nice you, you know I don't know whether it's that things are changing a little bit you can't get away with selling tat these days because obviously there's a lot more uh, online reviews and stuff like that but but I just it, I just noticed that there was a seemed to be a lot more quality there um, so which is good in a way, but bad because you want to buy literally everything. Uh, and I'm very good these days. That's another thing that's changed in four years. Usually I'd spend money I didn't have and, um, like I said, walk, walk, walk away with lots of guilt and shame. Uh, but a couple of nice things, which I'll talk about on other reviews. Um, uh, Card Shark was there with, with all his stuff. His stuff's great, isn't it? And, um, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the dealers, actually, because that would be uh, tedious. So uh, after that was uh, a, a bit of a look around there. Jared Kopf lecture. Now, the, on the first day, Jared did a lecture which wasn't really my kind of thing, like I said on day one. Uh, this was very much more my kind of thing. This was about Vernon, uh, so he did a lot in the cups and balls, um, cards up the sleeve, all, the, all these routines that I love and, and really picked them apart. And, and there is, and this isn't a criticism because I still love this. Uh, and it's that really geeky sort of really, really unpacking the tricks to, to that minutiae, all the little details. And I think it's it's good to do. I also think that sometimes we can fall into the trap of overthinking things, which for those people who are watching that maybe going out to do the cups and balls for the first time, I think sometimes if, if we overthink them, we can sort of get into that perfectionist thing and that can stop us actually going and performing them. So in a way, I, I, I really like the lecture, um, but for, for people wanting to to go into doing those tricks, I would say, you know, take that stuff with a pinch of salt. Don't worry too much about the first time you go out and getting all those little details. I mean, that's for the geeks and us that love that stuff. Um, but but it was it was really good and an incredible Di Vernon impression. Uh, he does this bit where he turns around and almost looks like he's having a bit of a kind of moment and sort of goes oh, like that and then comes back and he's Di Vernon. Now that is risky, you know, like, because if you do that thing of going off, turning around and getting into character, um, if it doesn't, if you don't pull that off, it can be really awkward and embarrassing and like, oh, God. And when that started happening, I was like, first of all, I thought he was having, having an issue and then, then he came back as Vernon. And, but because it was such a good impression, you couldn't help but fall into that. And it was very much the Vernon from the sort of Revelations DVDs time, the kind of crotchety, old kind of, you know, I mean, it was just brilliant. Seriously, lo loads of work put into that, very clear. And then and then he performed Triumph as Vernon and, and then came back as himself and, and told us about his version of Triumph, which was very slightly different, um, which was great. I enjoyed that. And uh, so after that, we had Kyle Littleton's lecture. Now, Kyle is um, a stand-up comedian and a, a, a magician and it was a weird one because he started with a kind of stand-up routine which even though it was good and you know it was clear and crisp and and you know the jokes were well written and all that kind of stuff it was probably a weird time to do that in the sort of afternoon when everybody's knackered uh, and wanting to see tricks basically and then he went and get into the tricks uh, a little bit later it kind of getting there but but you know I, I really liked it the the tricks for me which i'll talk about in other dvds were were nice kind of um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not, I can't think of anything. But but I'm not actually. I'm just going to reveal the uh, review the things. But you know things like when you get chewing gum and change it to a different chewing gum and another one and another one. It's a kind of cute thing, okay? And that was his his tricks were kind of quirky. That's the word, quirky um, and nice. Um, then we had the Sunday session. Right, I've got some notes here. Um, 
the Sunday session was great. So every Saturday, that was like about, three, you know, when they get about three or four people who all do, do a bit. Um, you had uh, Mark Kirsten, right? So Mark Kirsten, I, I reviewed his um, Tricks With Your Phone uh, PDF. So, and that's what he does. He's a tech genius, really. Uh, so it was really interesting to see how the talk was going to go. Cause he doesn't do many lectures and things like that, but it was, man, it was so crisp. You know, like it was, someone said it was like watching an, an Apple lecture or something. It was seriously rehearsed. Well, I don't know if it was, but it felt seriously rehearsed. Um, had a great rhythm to it. Mark looked good, really confident. It was funny. And he was talking about Wikitest, uh, which I, even though I'd reviewed tricks with your phone, I hadn't looked at Wikitest because I'm kind of one of those people that doesn't get too much into app magic, but man, it's seriously good. If you haven't checked out Wikitest, it absolutely fooled me. And then when he went into the workings of it, it's not surprising it fooled me because I think it would fool anybody. I don't think anybody could work that out, especially when it happens on someone else's phone. That sort of thinking is the stuff that will move app magic forward because app magic for me mostly is a little bit like people are going to say it's just an app but with this one it's not because it happens on their phone so really wiki test is just a joy and i want to get it um after that it was james went uh, james i haven't seen on stage ever uh, i've seen him on t tv and do all that stuff and he had a really lovely uh card to wallet idea on a card to wallet and i love things like that because it's trick a trick that so many of us do and i do it in a really basic way pick a card so it ends up in my wallet yeah you know which is great for lay people but this was uh, added another layer to it which i thought was made it feel a bit more of a journey uh so her routine in itself and it's always nice to do that because it gives you more it gives you more routines and it, it takes something you do you do and you can adapt it so i recommend looking at that i don't know where you can find that routine but um I'm sure you can ask him, email him, and he'll tell you. Um, the, uh, oh yeah, Elderfield. It was, um, oh man, what's his, hang on. Don't know his first name, so sorry. So he, he, he did a couple of really nice tricks, but loads of energy, maybe a little bit too much energy for me at that time, because I was literally exhausted. Um, but that was, yeah, he did a, did a really nice, really, really, really interesting card thing with a visual kind of illusion, which I'm sure he, he sells. Have a look at that. Uh, but Ben Seidman was next. And Ben Seidman, as I said before, had this brilliant show um, that we'd seen the, the night before. And he was just, again, for the anime, he unpacked one of his, uh, his tarot card trick that he did the night before, which is just so good. He did a cold read in it, and I was convinced there'd been some pre-show there. It was that good, and, and he explained how he did it, and it wasn't pre-show, it was literally a cold read, and so that was quite inspiring. And he's doing this tarot card trick, which I, he, he, he's released for, for lectures, but I think he's coming out, maybe I think through Vanishing Ink at some point, uh, which I look out for that, because it's really good. It's, it's kind of like, a, a little bit like the old one where you match the ESB symbol, someone's in front of you, and, they, and you deal one card out, and then they deal the card out. So you go first, but then you match the symbols. But with all this cold reading stuff, and with tarot, it gave, gave it a lot more meaning, and made it a lot more of a kind of showpiece. And then he did this, um, he did a couple of things. He did this complete coin vanish, which was ridiculously good. And, uh, but he did a really amazing coins across, based on Daryl's coins across. Um, uh, and I've always looked, whenever I see a coins across and there's kind of five coins on one side and five coins on the other, I always think oh, it's going to be like a really long, tedious, uh, confusing coins across, but not at all. It absolutely fooled me and it was beautiful and it was well routined and it built up to a finale because Ben Simon's one of those people that knows about building up to it, you know, the structure of a routine. Uh, and just was absolutely beautiful and was gimmickless and, and I can't wait to that now go back to the Daryl book, play with that, and remember his, his work on it. And I'm sure that'll be released at some point. I think it's in his lecture notes. Um, so really recommended. Uh, and then we move on later to the, uh, the gala show. So the gala, gala show was um, Florian Brooks, who is a juggler that did a flawless routine and I'm a juggler okay my, my past is juggling I went to circus school in 96 and part of my show for 10 years was a juggling routine so I can I can really appreciate juggling uh, and everybody else can because he absolutely stormed it beautiful routine very elegant very sort of vaudevillian um, but just crisp and sharp and not a drop it was just re really really beautiful um, and then uh, Danny de Ortiz and we all know how good he is and sort of brought the house down with this stuff got a load of people on stage and just 
you know, did what he does, but did it very well and incredibly entertaining. And I've seen that quite a lot of time and still really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and of course, Matt King. Oh, I um, uh, uh, didn't talk about the Matt King lecture because I was saving it, but uh, I can't really talk a lot about that. I did miss the last half hour, but the Matt King lecture was as you'd expect. If you don't know who Matt King is, and I know most of you are going, well, of course we do, but if you're kind of new to magic, you might not. Matt King is a comedy magician that's had a, a show in Vegas forever, basically. I mean, it's so long running, years and years. Uh, you know, two shows a day, or maybe more sometimes. Uh, so he, he, you know, to see someone that does comedy magic in such a, a, a worked in way, and I know we see it before with Penn and Teller and things like that, but he is genuinely hilarious. The magic is ridiculously strong and it, and it's just a joy to watch. Now, and, and it really, um, when uh, there's a lot of argument in magic about, you know, humor dilutes the magic, dilutes the magic, especially with mentalism, and th that's all nonsense. Like, if you can do strong magic, strong humor, it's just about where you put the humor and where, how you frame the effects. And to watch Matt King do something like a rope routine, which we've all seen, you know, the routine itself, the trick, or, or I should say itself, many, many times, but to see how entertaining you can make that, that, that to me is where the real learning comes from and the inspiration from conventions. It's, it's a trick that you've seen hundreds of times that can be done in such a dull way, you know, and you're laughing your ass off watching a rope train, you know, that I kind of, I do that a version of that routine. And so, so that's brilliant to watch and, and to hear his story, he's got a brilliant story of, of him kind of throwing up on stage at one time, um, which I could, you know, I suppose if you're working every single day in Vegas, one day you're going to, that things, sort of thing's going to happen or worse. But just really funny stories, really good. Uh, overrun, uh, like a good pro, but uh, that was brilliant. So back to the gala show. Uh, so the, so his, his show was really important for me because I am not the sort of person that can get to Vegas. You know, my, my life still demands that I can't really go away for more than three days at a time. So I've always had this this thing in me that, that is really annoyed that I, I can't see Matt King's show, same as Copperfield and things like that. So for me to get a chance to watch him do 40 minutes, you know, at the end of the gala show, yes, it's not his whole show, his whole show runs an hour and 10, but it's a good chunk of his, his you know, his best known stuff with a with with real experience. And I was so glad that I got to see that. Um, and there's not much you can say other than it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it, if you ever get a chance to see Matt King do, you know, and if you don't in a sort of live environment have a you know check out this stuff on online and it's 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 really good very inspiring uh, so that was that so yeah blimey what a ramble that is like 13 minutes so uh really good f f for to come back into magic conventions and do that was was a really good experience you know personally it was it was pretty profound for me because i reconnected with people i kind of knew f a bit in the last few years and running my show in Sheffield I've seen every now and then but to actually sit and talk and you forget how important that is the magic world you know if you're performing and practicing all the time and selling your stuff and, and all that it can become quite insular and I think that that, that connecting with people for three days and, and does refresh you in more ways than just the magic side of things you know you have you have conversations um, that lead on to other conversations I sat at breakfast with people I never never even heard of that were actually quite well known I sat and talked to someone that wrote for Genie Magazine and wrote reviews, had conversations around that. So it wasn't just about meeting the magicians, it was meeting the other people that, that you wouldn't really plan to meet. And one of the things I would say in magic conventions, you know, I think what I used to do is make a beeline for the people I wanted to meet when I was younger in a kind of networky way. And, and that always failed. And now I don't do that. It's just kind of seeing who you meet and being open to everyone. And, and, and that, that experience was a lot richer for me and probably a lot more useful without me tr trying to make it so. Uh, so got some other news as well, which I'm going to talk about in the next video. So the next video is going to be a review um, and I've got a bit of news, a bit of change uh, that's happening or development of this review show, which is much needed. So thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you enjoyed my rambles. The next one will be less rambly, but thank you. Any questions at all, just, uh, just put it in the comments. All right. Thanks very much. Bye.